Hi there, it's John from It's More Than Just Gaming.com here, and welcome to you today. Um, today I'm going to be doing another one of my videos, but it's a little bit different for a change. We're going to be doing um, a preview of a game that's coming to Kickstarter in September 2017, so this September next month. Um, it's called Scrooge the Board Game. Um, I to give you a little bit of background, I went I was attending the UK Games Expo earlier this year in June and I saw the gentleman producing Scrooge the board game. Um I saw their stall and being a bit of a gaming magpie, I was attracted to the shiny board and cards and I'm a bit of a fan of some of Charles Dickens' work. I've not admittedly not read loads and loads of it, but I do like what I have read. And I thought Scrooge the board game would be quite an interesting concept. Um, so I started chatting to them, exchanged details with them, and they very kindly sent me a prototype copy to preview and playtest for them. Um, I won't be going through a playtest today, um, but I will give you a preview of how the game plays and how I feel about it. So, let's get on with some more of the details. Okay, so... Like I said, I was attracted to shiny things, and as you can see, the board itself is very colourful, very pretty, very shiny. Um, the streets are named after London, um, because obviously a lot of Dickens' work happened in London, as Christmas Carol certainly did. And the object is for two to six players to start here and make their way all the way around the board and try to get to Scrooge's moment of truth at the end of the trail on square 56. Um, with the winner being the person who is able to complete the moment of truth challenge, which redeems Scrooge and makes him a kinder, uh, less miserly gentleman, just like at the end of Christmas Carol. Um, along the way, you will every single street has some ability on it. Uh, some of them are helpful, some of them are not. Um, some of them very much are not helpful at all and will allow you to, um, well, 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 they'll penalise you, but some of them will allow you to penalise others. Um, and I'll go through them in a little bit more detail in a minute. There are six characters to choose from. Uh, Mr. Micawber, Artful Dodger, Fagin, Mr. Peckwick, Oliver Twist and Bell. Um, those are various Dickensian characters, half of them from Oliver Twist, if I don't miss my guess. Um, they don't have any unique abilities, they are just flavour, uh, but that's quite cool. So, let's go on to moving around about the board. Okay, for the purpose of this test, I'm going to be using the Fagin miniature, uh, just because why not. Um, each player at the start of the game gets 1,000 money, which I should have mentioned earlier, but I didn't. Naughty me. Um, so it feels very much like Monopoly in that respect. Um, and Scrooge's Counting House gets uh, 500 money. Um, anytime you pay a fine or anything like that or buy something, it goes into Scrooge's Counting House. And anytime you get money, it comes out of Scrooge's Counting House. And you can, in fact, win the contents of the Counting House. The one time we actually, uh, on Space uh, 32, uh, the, the first time we actually played this game, uh, the same person got Scrooge's Crowning House basically three times in a row. So, first of all, when it's your turn, you have a number of options. You can firstly pay 500 money to advance one square, and you can do that multiple times, which might come in useful if you need to get to a specific nearby square, but it seems quite expensive to me. Second of all, you can actually opt not to have a turn and play a replace a turn ghost card. This one says here, replace a turn, collect 300 gold or money from Scrooge's bank or move forward three spaces. So that's quite useful, possibly worth sacrificing a turn for. Um, wonder if you can, yeah, can you see that there okay, I hope? Well, you can just trust me that it says what it says it does. Or you can roll the dice. There are two dice in the game, the regular black dice and the white Marley dice. Um, you can opt to roll one or both of them, and you can choose to move forwards or backwards, but you need to announce which before you roll the dice. Otherwise, as soon as you roll, it's assumed you're moving forwards if you didn't announce. Um, it, the advantage to moving backwards is that for every space you move backwards, you get 50 money into your personal bank, uh, and that's quite useful later on in the game. 
you'll also notice that in the white Marley dice there are negative numbers and a zero. You can in fact roll both dice and end up moving zero. You can say I'm moving forward and end up moving back if you got say for instance a one on the black die and a minus two on the white die. So let's actually go through some of the things that happens when you land on squares. Okay, so if Fagan has landed on the Bank of England, which is square one, and it's got the money box symbol plus two, which means you draw two Scrooge's money box cards. Scrooge's money box cards basically are either bonuses or penalties, and they tend to be a fairly Dickensian theme. So let's see, can you see that? The first one, Scrooge's black moment, Marley's ghost, lose 150 gold. So that one's quite bad. The second one, elected beadle, uh, which is basically an official, a church official in a village usually, if I recall correctly, win 25 gold. So you would say lose 25, win 20, uh, 150, sorry, lose 150, win 25. So overall that's costing you 125 paid into Scrooge's money box. Not ideal, and I had something like that basically in the st my first turn of the game. The next one along, Doughty Street, is plus one ghost card. Now, basically that means you draw a ghost card. Um, you've seen some of them are replace a turn. Others are play at any time cards. This one's a second chance. Don't like your dice, then roll again before moving. So that's quite cool. Let's have another one. Bob Cratchit Toast Christmas. Nay, block any ghost card actions or ghost card steals. Some of the spaces on the board have the picture of the ghost on them, but they don't have a number. They say steal. Basically, you steal a ghost card from someone else, so that's quite fun. The next one, Whitehall. It's a bag with a plus one on it, which means you draw one Scrooge's bag of tricks card. Now, unless you are the player furthest out in front, you don't resolve the card you give the bag of tricks card to the person who is in the lead. If that's you, you resolve it immediately. If it is the, another player, you give it to them and they resolve it before their main turn. Let's see what this says. So, I, let's say Oliver Twist is actually a little bit ahead. That's Oliver Twist there on street. You're feeling generous today. Ask any player to join you on the board and pay them 100 gold to have fun. So basically, Oliver Twist would have to make me run up to catch up with them and then give me a hundred gold. So bag of tricks cards can be quite nasty. Let's see, there's another money box card there. And then there are these black ones which are nightmare, buy nightmare cards. Now, nightmare cards are... They're a cost early on in the game. Basically, it says buy, so you would pick up a Nightmare card. This one costs 150 gold. Sorry, you can't see that there. Um, however, there are two types of Nightmare card. There is the Pure Nightmare, which just costs you money. And then there is the Turning Point Nightmare, which every player starts with the Turning Point Nightmare. This one's... Uh, and they can be used in multiple ways. So, this Turning Point Nightmare, activate at the end of the turn, protect yourself from ghost cards played against you. That's a persistent effect that happens for the rest of the game, incredibly useful. Or there's a discard ability. All players return any Nightmare cards held, do not collect gold. Okay, so that's also quite useful. You can also sell these when you get the option, because later on, as you get further around the board, there are sell uh, cards for Nightmares. Basically, what you do is, when you get to a sell space, you can take as many nightmares from your hand as you want. You can hold a maximum of five, I think it is. Um, you m then add them together and roll a d6. So, for instance, let's say I was going to sell those two. Roll a d6. So it's 100, 250 gold multiplied by one, so I get 250 money back for that. Sorry, you can't see that, but that one costs 100. But if that had been three... So that would be 750 money coming back my way, which is quite handy. And there are bonuses if you, spend, if you sell three nightmares at a time or four nightmares at a time. So that's quite cool. So I'll just pop this back on the deck. And I'll pop this over here just now. Okay, so we're now a little bit further around the board and we have another one of the Dickens classics. Uh, Debtor's Prison. Um, which I think featured in several of his stories and as I, if I recall my history correctly Charles Dickens spent part of his life in debtor's prison as a result of his father. Um, 
so he had uh, not so fond memories of the place. Um, square 14 is debtor's prison. If you land on it, you are in prison. There are, pr and you might also be sent there by other cards. You can escape by rolling a six, um, or by paying the fine of 250 money. If you roll a six to escape, then you move six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, which you can't, uh, yeah, it lands you on uh, Scrooge's money box, which could actually make you lose money or you might gain it. Um, you have to decide whether you're rolling or if you're paying the fine at the start of the turn. Um, so that's just another little nasty thing that can happen to you. Um, Square 17 and several other squares quite like it are all play. And there are two all play games that happen on the board. There is Scrooge's Haggle, which is basically sort of like playing a, a round of poker, basically. Um, everybody puts in an ante of 50 money um, and you do one round of betting. Uh, Scrooge, the Scrooge's Counting House always matches the top bet. And then there's Scroogle, which is random. Basically, the person who lands on it picks a number between one and six. Everyone else picks a number apart from Sc Scrooge. And you roll a dice. And whosoever number comes up gets all the money. If there aren't six players in the game and then a number is rolled that wasn't chosen, then tough. Um, that means the money goes to the counting house. Okay. So Fagin has actually moved, he's got out of debtor's prison and he's landed on a space that has his own name on it. Now, there are a number of spaces in the game that actually have images and character names for the various characters in the game. If you land on your own space, uh, then you get 100 money from Scrooge's Counting House and 50 money from everyone else. If you land on someone else's, then you... Um, then you pay that pay player 100 money. And if you land on a character that's not uh, being played by any other player, you pay 50 to Scrooge's Counting House. Um, as you can see there, I mentioned earlier, there's the cell squares. There's one there. Um, when you land on one of those, that allows you to sell your nightmare cards. Um, you need one of those to sell your nightmare cards. Okay, so that's the majority of the things that can happen to you on the board. There are a few other things, like there are places that give you some fines. There are screwed you spaces that send you backwards or in the wrong direction or to a specific space. And there are bridges that you can use to take shortcuts or they set you back because you, they send you in the wrong way. But the purpose of all this is to get to square 56 at the end of the trail to do Scrooge's Moment of Truth. Now, to do Scrooge's Moment of Truth, you need to satisfy two conditions. One, you need to be able to pay 500 money to actually participate, unless you have a ghost card that says you can do it for free. And two, you cannot have any regular nightmare cards. You're allowed to have turning point nightmare cards, but you're not allowed to have pure nightmare cards. Um, and you need to actually show your nightmare cards to make sure that you're not cheating. When you get there, what happens is you do the moment of truth. Now, at the start of the game, five heroes and villains cards were actually chosen from a deck of 12. These um, add and subtract from the uh, Scrooge's value in the moment of truth. So there, were, there are more villains... Oops, that's face up. There are more villains than heroes in the deck. And what happens in the moment of truth is Scrooge gets dealt one hero or villain card and three money box cards, like so. And the player gets dealt three money box cards. I'll just move the bag of tricks out of the way. And then once you've done that, you turn over the money box cards one at a time. That's looking good for the player. Looking very good for the player. Okay, so currently the player's got 225, 175. Scrooge has got minus 25. So the player's winning. Oh, and this is actually a faulty card. Never mind. Uh, yeah, that's been reported. It was just a misprint in my set, I think. So flip that over. 
minus 50. So an action, in this version, Scrooge ends up with minus 75 gold, whereas the player, or money, and the player ends up with 175 gold. The player, should they wish to, can play ghost cards, because they can be played, excuse me, at any time. So for instance, the player might add 300 gold using that ghost card there. Then all the other players have what's called the last gasp, where everyone gets an opportunity to play ghost cards um, to try and decrease the value on the money cards or block things. So for instance, if they had a nay card, they could actually stop that ghost card going there in the hopes that someone else can do something to boost Scrooge's money because they don't want your character to be redeeming Scrooge. They want to do it themselves. In this case, the player actually won uh, by random quirk of fate. It was a really good hand for the player. Um, it is entirely possible to get to the moment of truth without any other players left on the board, and that makes it easy. Um, it's entirely possible, like I said earlier, that no one gets to the moment of truth because you're all eliminated by poverty. But that's dealing with moneylenders and Scrooge and banks and stuff like that for you, isn't it? Okay, so that's the basic overview of the gameplay. So, what are my overall thoughts on this game? This game is actually a very enjoyable little game uh, for two to six players. It'll take maybe between 40 to 45 minutes to 90 minutes or so to play. Um, it feels very, there are, there are two versions of this game in my mind. There's the family orientated version where you play this as a family at Christmas and you roll dice and you race each other to the finish line and it's a little bit like Monopoly where you can spend money, you can, there's a banker, there's a prison and there's streets with London names on them. The other version is closer to Munchkin in my mind where you are deliberately trying to land on bag of tricks cards so that you can shaft the person in front you are tactically moving backwards because you don't want to be in the lead uh, because the person out front is more vulnerable to attack from other players. I mean, you, there's no cards in the game that allow you to specifically target someone, but that doesn't mean that a canny player couldn't arrange for it to happen. Um, I think this game falls somewhere in between. I think the Dickensian stuff makes it quite funny uh, and quite pretty. Um, any fan of Dickens' work will probably, and a fan of board games will probably enjoy it. Um, the moment of truth, the players have influence over it, but there's a strong chance element as well, so it doesn't matter how well you play, um, you could just get a really horrendous draw, but then in order to mitigate against that risk, a canny player will go into the moment of truth with as many ghost cards as possible, and ideally a turning point card that's really, really useful. The one that I showed you earlier protects from other ghost cards, for instance. So that would be an amazing turning point card to have in the moment of truth. Oh, look, um, I'm winning. We want to play a ghost card on you. No, you can't. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for this on Kickstarter in September. I will post links to the Scrooge the Board Game social media, their Facebook page and Facebook group and their Twitter handle in the description of this video. I'll have some photographs and scans of cards uh, appearing on my blog. The link will also appear in the description of this video. Um, if you enjoyed this or found it interesting, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye now.